Hey folks, Ray DC America.com here. I am the mysterious voice you cannot see right now, but that's the point of this video. It is all about these two watches right here, or it's actually just one watch, just both versions of it. It is the Garmin 41945, and this is just a user interface video, not a review video. For the review of the 945, look up there in the corner um, or somewhere else on the screen or my post down there. Uh, again, this is just to walk through the user interface. It could be like 10 minutes long, it could be 20 minutes long, it could be 45 minutes long. Uh, you know how long it is, you clicked on the thumbnail. So let's just get right into it. Uh, this is the 945. I'm going to move the headphones and the RD pod out of the way for the moment. Uh, if you look at the 935, which is the one right to the left of it right here, uh, you'll see they are virtually identical. Uh, you flip them over though, you'll notice some of the difference. Is the optical heart rate sensor package is different here. So uh, this basically has where the new pulse ox uh, sensor is there. So that's for SpO2 readings. But otherwise, it's pretty similar. The easiest way to tell them apart is to look at the buttons. You'll notice that the old 4935 has kind of like silver buttons versus this has like a darker gray silver on the buttons. It's kind of like the only way you can tell them apart from far away. If you have the bundle version, it has this little blue uh, etching on the side there as well and the blue strap that you can see from four miles away. Uh, but the base version is all black right there. Oh, and just one quick brief interruption. If you are finding this interesting, go ahead and like that like button right now. Uh, it certainly helps out the channel and the video quite a bit. All the straps and everything work between the two of them just fine. So if you have old straps or whatnot from your 935, they'll carry over to the 945, uh, no problem at all. So let's get this guy out of the way here. Up there, out, there we go. And we have the unit here itself. Now, I'm mostly gonna use this one because of the fact that's one I've been using most of the time. So everything's kind of fairly current on it. So I'll put this one up for the corner right there for right now and focus on this guy. Uh, this is the watch face. You can go and customize it by simply pressing the middle button right there. And then you'll see watch face. And now you'll see I can iterate through the different watch faces. And if I choose a watch face, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to the default one that I had there. Once I press this to choose it, I can customize the data in there. So I can change like the layout, the exact data. I can say, I don't want the date up there. I want uh, something else, like my heart rate right there. And I can, I can do that. And you can customize all this stuff uh, quite a bit, but just exactly like the Phoenix 5 could in the past um, or the 935 as well. Uh, you can also go ahead and put your own Connect IQ watch face on here too. So if you've got a watch face you prefer, you can download that, or you can even put like your photo on there using the Connect IQ app uh, from the Connect IQ app store. So I'm gonna cancel back out of this here, save changes. Nope, I like my default stock watch face the way it is. And we'll go down through some of the widgets. So press the up and down button to get to the widgets. Uh, this is my most recent, I believe, run right here. So uh, this is the VO2 max estimate from that most recent run, to be more precise about that. Uh, if I were to tap the OK button right there, you'll see my VO2 max there as well. Um, now Garmin's got a bit of a weird like infatuation with VO2 max lately. And I get it, like VO2 max tells you a lot of things and it's useful and all that jazz, but it doesn't change very much. And so once you stabilize, and I haven't really stabilized on, I would say on these watches, my workouts haven't been structured to stabilize for that, meaning that uh, you know you have certain workouts that will get you better VO2 max values in terms of getting a truer value, uh, and my workouts have not been that. Uh, so anyways, you can see some of these here, lactate threshold, the race predictor then is dependent on that VO2 max value. Uh, and then on top of that, the new race predictor here will go ahead and account for uh, things like heat and humidity in terms of its values. Additionally, it will also account for the fact that uh, if you haven't put in the base mileage in to do a marathon, like I haven't been recently, uh, then it's not going to be able to give you a marathon race predictor time that's lower. So in the past, what they did is they simply took your VO2 max value up here, uh, and they went ahead and used their age and gender formulas that are pretty much well known. And then they just calculated the best possible marathon half, et cetera, values. Um, that was great, except that, you know, if you only had run like four miles, but you could do a really, really um, solid track session, you would get, you know, a skewed number there. So it's kind of nice to see that take into account your actual base mileage. Going back here into the widget role, uh, training status, this is where a lot of the new features and functionality is on this watch. Uh, that's not there on the 935 or even the Phoenix 5 Plus. So we go ahead and press the enter button right there. And we got again, the VO2 max value because we love VO2 max. Uh, here is seven day load. This is a, a numeric load number. And so you can see each one of these days I'm contributing load based on what I'm doing. Um, and right there is smartphone notifications coming in. Uh, let me know that our drop cam, nest cam has 
uh, seen something outside, so we'll just go ahead and clear that out of the way there. Um, but in this case, you can see the load on different days, and then it's showing me my optimal load is between 722 and 1540. Right now, I'm at 1022. I haven't done anything today yet, except for write reviews and photos and all that kind of goodness. If I press this upper right-hand button right here, I can go ahead and uh, see what it tells me to do next. In my case, it says I'm doing something ideal. So boom, that's a first. Um, and then going on down, you'll see my load focus. And right there, it showed the different load types and then how I'm bracketed or bucketed into those load types. So you can see where I have a shortage right now, for example, uh, in the purple and teal buckets. And if I click up here, uh, it'll tell me what to do about that and to try working in easier runs and kind of balance things out a little bit. Uh, which gets to, you know, one of the, the challenges when you're training by yourself is that you tend to usually overdo stuff. In most cases, you tend to overdo runs and uh, do bikes too easy and whatnot. So this is trying to go ahead and kind of even that a little bit. You can see the same information on your phones or the Garmin Connect mobile app as well. Going on down there, here's my recovery hours, zero hours right now till my next hard workout. And then the heat acclimation continues to degrade. Uh, it's anything over 71 degrees Fahrenheit, which I believe is 22 degrees Celsius, will trigger a heat acclimation where it'll go ahead and acclimate you to that temperature. So if I went from here to Dubai, for example, where it's much, much warmer, I would start to trigger this because my body needs to acclimate to that heat. Uh, the same is true for altitude as well, over 8,500 meters. Uh, and then you can convert that into feet, 20, I think 600 feet or so the exact same thing we're to acclimate that and that's all based on pretty well published studies and whatnot so not a lot of mystery magic there uh it's pretty straightforward you can see that right there the icon means i'm still heat acclimating uh, and there's a little mountain one there if i'm altitude acclimating uh, in that case because you saw it was trending downwards if you look at this this means uh it's obviously cold here now and i left kind of a warmer place or warmer weather to be more precise and so therefore i'm losing that acclimation so going back here uh, down into this, these are my heart stats or health stats. So this is my current uh, continuous heart rate using the sensor on the back right there. If I go put my finger on this in a moment, it'll go ahead and read that heart rate value uh, sooner or later. So, uh, you know, it obviously it's not quite a deal doing it this way, but eventually it would read the heart rate value. You can see that value over the last uh, four hours right there. And I go down here and this is the SPO2 value. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can get it to read it in a second. Man, I get all the alerts today. And there we go. Uh, so there we go. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and you're going to see a red light. So give it one quick second. It's going to go really, really, really fast. Boom. There's a red light. That is the SPO2 uh, sensor right there that's trying to make that reading. Uh, ideally, you do this in a very still environment, uh, and this is primarily used for uh, acclimation at high altitudes mostly. Uh, there's some, some use of this in sleep and whatnot um, at lower altitudes, but it's primarily for acclimation at higher altitudes. And then you can look at uh, what the last week looks like. You can see those different metrics right there, primarily gathering that data at night for me when I'm nice and still. Uh, so going on back here, oops, here we go. The other widgets, uh, that's my stress widget, and this is my body battery. You can see the last four hours there, it's gained a little bit as I've been kind of a bit more relaxed the last four hours. Uh, and generally, body battery works pretty well for me. Like, it, it mimics what I'm doing uh, in real life. And someone I saw left a comment kind of saying, you know, sort of like looking outside at the weather rock, you know, like if it's, if it's white, then it's snowing, if it's wet, then it's raining and so on. And that's true, except that it's actually recording that data for me. And so in this case, you're not looking to it for guidance, what you've done right that exact second, but really looking for more historical logging of how you might feel. And so in that sense, it's actually kind of really fascinating uh, if you look at it from that perspective. Uh, down below, I've got uh, my day. These are basically like how many steps I've taken and, and whatnot. Uh, uh, and so you can see that there are not a whole lot of steps at this point in time. And then down the bottom, the goals uh, or the number of days I've checked off my goal steps. And back to the dedicated SPO2 sensor. Here we have got the smartphone notifications uh, that have been popping in constantly. Uh, weather right there paired to my phone. And then these are the calendar. And in particular, this top one's interesting here. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it's upset right this second, but the top one's interesting because this is actually a structural workout off of my Garmin Connect calendar merged with my uh, regular like Outlook, et cetera, calendar uh, for my computer. So it all kind of merges all that data right together into one cohesive picture as opposed to being different things. Uh, and so like if you had training peaks on here or trainer road soon, you would see those structured scheduled workouts on the same single calendar, uh, even though they're technically two separate calendars. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and this is music. So this is music on the 945. It's identical to music on the Phoenix 5 Plus and really every other Garmin watch there is except for the VBuck 3 where it's a little bit different right there. Uh, in this case, I can press this top right hand button right there. You can see the play controls. And here are the headphones and you can see they're already turned on right here. It's just 
these pair of old Beats that I've had for like years that I bought. You can't even buy them anymore. It's their, they work fine for me though. I'm happy with them. Um, I press the play button right there. And as soon as I do that, it should start playing right there. You can see it changed to pause and you can see a small green marker right there. We'll go ahead and around the corner. And if I go ahead and put this up next to the microphone, let's see if you can hear it there. Hopefully, maybe. Um, so again, you can see it's playing quite clearly. I can skip songs down here in the bottom corner there. Uh, and this is just on a playlist. And the way this works is I go down here, press that middle button, uh, and here is music providers. So you can see I've got Spotify as a provider. My music are things that I load mainly onto the unit, um, like you know 1980 style. I can control music on my phone, or I can add another provider, so something like Deezer, iHeartRadio, etc. We'll go back once and just tap this once instead of long hold. And then up here, um, well, first off, this is sort of like your rotary controls. So because I was playing music, it's going to default to, do you want to change the volume, for example? So I could do that. I can change the volume there. It will honor the, the buttons on your controller if you have that. So I think I can do this right here. Um, so you can see pressing that there, changes over there. So kind of cool, change volume and whatnot. And then I can skip tracks and whatnot there. And the same is true if I have buttons here that allow me to do that, I can go ahead and do that. Up to the top, library, and then here are two Spotify playlists that I've downloaded, so Beast Mode and Popped Pump, um, which are just from their workout category. So I go to Add Music on Podcasts, and then at this point, I guess my phone connection has dropped out or whatnot, but it will allow me to go ahead and uh, add those music or podcasts or add additional music or podcasts that are on uh, my Spotify account. And then I can go to Update Downloads, and that will trigger this unit here to connect over Wi-Fi uh, to download music from Spotify. Uh, now, keep in mind that when you're looking at this, you're downloading the music ahead of time, so it's not something that you do while you're actually running or writing or whatever. Um, it's not like streaming in the sense of like you stream it on your phone without pre-downloading it. This is all pre-downloads. This is true across all of Garmin's wearables and all of Garmin's music providers. Even the cellular connected Vivo Active 3 LTE still requires you to pre-download your music. Um, so overall, this has been working really great for me with these headphones. Of course, keep in mind that um, music in wearables is really a very finicky connection a lot of times, and it's going to depend on the connection between the headphones and the watch itself. Both devices are competing uh, for super low power, uh, like Olympics, if you will, and so they're both trying to be right on the very razor edge of what they can get away with. Uh, one tip is to figure out which side of your headphones is the communication side, and wear that on the same half of your body as the watch. So if the left-hand side in this case, um, this is the uh, yeah, left-hand side, is the one with the communications headphone or communications on your headphones, then wear your watch on the same side or, or vice versa. And that will help out quite a bit. So skipping back here past music, uh, I think we've gone through, oops, here we go. Um, we've gone through almost all the widgets. Here's my history over the last 30 days. So you can see the different uh, time periods there. It's kind of nice, just a neat little way of looking at that. And then I can look in at the activities here and pull them up uh, in more detail if I wanted to as well. Um, and then down, here we go. Uh, this week, that's just a test activity I did right there. Another test activity, my heart rate. Uh, and this is Garmin Coach, if you have Garmin Coach set up, which is kind of their adaptive training plan, body battery, and back to the main home screen right there. So I'm going to go and press this to start an activity up here. So I've pressed this once, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose Run. And this point, it's going to go off and find uh, a GPS. Now I'm in a concrete bunker, so it's not going to be able to succeed at that, but it will be able to find the RD pod. If I go ahead and just shake this a little bit here, it should wake that up. And then in a second, we'll see it. It'll note that there we go. So RD pod, this is for running dynamics. And when I did that, what I gain out of that is a new running dynamics pages. Um, not new, they're, they've been here forever. Um, and they haven't really changed any either. I'm just going to start this activity. And the reason I'm doing that, we can get rid of that banner right there. Um, but you can see ground contact time balance, vertical ratio, um, all these metrics that you don't really know what to do with that's still here. You still don't really know what to do with them. Um, and then here is the map. And so the map is probably the coolest part of the um, whole like new stuff on the Forerunner 945. And the way it works is this will show you your current location, in my case, uh, location just down the street here before I went into the concrete bunker. And I can go ahead and I can adjust the map if I want to, uh, not by pressing that button, but by holding the left hand button over there and I can do pan and zoom and so this is the exact same thing that was on the Phoenix 5 plus that allows me to move things around so I can go out like this uh, and what I'm doing is changing these three little bubbles over there each time I do that so I go zoom in or out so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here now and then I'm gonna change the bubbles over here from zoom to scroll now you can see I go up here on the left hand side let me just press this there we go it's kind of it's slow there we go uh, and now you'll see it scrolling up if I press it again, it'll go pan to go left and right. 
Um, and this may seem cumbersome, and it kind of is, but it's not that bad, and you're not really doing this all the time. The point here is to be able to like, you know, take this little arrow thing and put it on top of a mountain and tell me to go hike over there, and then get the trails, the routing information using the map data here to get to that point. So you're not like using this like you would browse around Google Maps on your phone to find McDonald's or something. You're using this to find something as sort of a one-off. So in that scenario, it's actually perfectly fine. It's certainly better than like a touchscreen that doesn't work really well when your fingers are wet or whatever else. Uh, so people are generally pretty happy with this arrangement. I haven't like seen anyone that's upset about the way this works uh, in real life using a watch that's been out now for I don't know, a year or two for this particular mapping arrangement. Um, so that's a lap button, by the way, that I just pressed right there. Uh, and so that just creates a, a triggers a lap. And then if I go here and press this button, I can get into uh, the settings for the run as well as navigation. So a couple of navigation things around me right now. We'll go ahead and using the map, it'll find points of interest and whatnot around me. So that could be restaurants, it could be hotels. Uh, you know, the goal here is really to probably find things on the fly. Uh, but I think for the most part, people are probably gonna be just using your phone for this because uh, this tends to take a while, it's slow, the data is usually out of date, uh, it doesn't seem to find everything. You can see some of those things that it finds right there, the icons for them, you know, whether it be parking or food or gas station or I guess a briefcase over there. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's nice to have if you're in the wilderness and this is all you've got, but I think most people are just going to use their phone. Uh, going on down here, you can save a location into run settings. Virtually everything here is pretty much the exact same as previous in terms of all the customization you have. You can do tons and tons of stuff. Climb Pro, this is where you enable that there. Uh, and Climb Pro basically will go ahead and show you automatically when you're navigating. So if you've got a route loaded or if you use that little map thing to put the, the dot on top of the mountain and tell you to go there, um, it'll use the known trails on that route and it'll basically figure out your climbs automatically. So it looks at that trail and says, oh, uh, you've got you know 600 feet of elevation remaining uh, and you've got a mile to do that in. And it'll say that for metric as well. And at the same time, it'll also go ahead and say your average gradient on the way up is 4%. Um, so it's, it's cool stuff. Like it works really, really well. It's been on the Phoenix 5 Plus uh, series now, and it's also on the new Edge 830 and 530. I love it on those units. Uh, so it's kind of neat stuff. I keep putting that lap button. I just, I mean to go back and I forget that I'm already in timer mode here. So a couple more run settings things. Navigation, this is where I can also load up courses if I have them. Create a round trip course, which means to go ahead and give it a distance. So I can say I want five mile course. Uh, I want it to be south and go forth and it'll create three different courses for you uh, that you can run it's it's cool or bike or whatever you want it to be whatever mode you're in it'll do that uh, this does take a while like at least a few minutes to go ahead and create these courses but if you're somewhere where you don't really know the routes this is a good way of doing that and it's going to use what's called popularity or trend line data um, which is basically a fancy term for heat map data that garmin has from their millions of activities that are uploaded every day on the platform and this is all on the unit itself so no dependency on uh, connectivity or anything like that you can just do this in the middle of nowhere um, so again i keep pressing the lap button there uh, i'm going to stop this because i've just got to remember that i'm already in an activity here so it's going to keep on lapping and then a discard there we go and get that out of the way here and i think at this point that's pretty much it like that is the vast majority of the new features oh one quick thing here is uh garmin pay and whatnot so in the top there we go reminder to take off the rd pod so you don't want to go in the watch um, up here we'll go ahead and just Press this once to get into the kind of rotary dial of options. You've got your wallet in there, uh, a couple of the things like stopwatch timers. This is the emergency assistance. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and search the phone connection there. And that will go ahead and notify someone that um, I may be in trouble. So that's a way to do that. You can also long hold this button up here. So if I just long hold that down for about three seconds, keep on going, keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. And there we go. It's gonna do the exact same thing as well. Uh, and that'll let my predefined emergency contacts know uh, what's up and where I am. And it starts a live track and they can follow me. And there's also a pre can message in there um, that I can kind of give them, hey, um, I'm concerned about something, uh, please track me or whatever the case may be. Also up here, this is where you go ahead and use Garmin Pay as well. So you go like this, you put in your pin code number, and then a second later, it goes ahead and will show you uh, the wallet. You just simply tap it, uh, your credit card onto whatever you wanna buy, and you are good to go. So with that, I think that covers everything. Again, full 945 review up in the corner up there and down there. You'll find it all those kind of places by now you, you know what you're doing there. Hope you found this interesting. If so, whack that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button. Uh, I should have mentioned that at the very beginning as well, but uh, definitely that helps out things quite a bit. Have a good one.